Well, it's officially happened. Shannon Sharp, formerly of Undisputed, has joined Stephen A. Smith at first take. And on Shannon Sharp's podcast, they already went through a couple of subjects that were pretty entertaining. And as you could imagine, off the bat, debate LeBron James versus Michael Jordan. Huh? See, that's you, the most You right told thing. me the storm was coming. Right. See, your storm happened for nine years, then took two years off. Right. And it happened for three years, yep. and took another three years off. Right. And then it kind of just was like drizzling. Right. My th storm been going for 21 years raining. Right, right. You could say that, and my retort to that would be six NBA Finals losses. So, so they only, so they only, just a fact, there's six final losses, yeah. huh? six final losses. Let me ask you a question. Six. I just want you to tell me one thing, and we're going to debate this. Sure. Tell me the team that he faced that was the 2017 or the 2018 Golden State Warriors. So, stopping that right there, Shannon Sharp, I understand the point he's trying to make about longevity, how LeBron James' the storm has been going for, what, 21 years? That's kind of a good argument. But compared to Michael Jordan, who only played 15 years, you gotta ask the question, how has LeBron played so much longer, but is still trailing him in so many accolades? I mean, look at this. LeBron James, the gap between him and Jordan is one MVP, one defense play a year, nine scoring titles, three steals titles, two championships, two finals MVPs, and five all defensive first teams. At some point, LeBron's longevity, playing what, 21, 22, possibly 23 years. When you compare that to Michael Jordan, who only played 15 years, it's going to be pretty hard to explain why LeBron James doesn't have more accolades and championships. And hypothetically speaking, if the gap between Jordan LeBron accolades was an actual NBA player, it would rival the legacy of someone like a Kevin Durant. And KD is no slouch, don't get it twisted, he's a top 15 player of all time. And for Stephen A. Smith, I don't think he's the best representative of a Michael Jordan fan and a real good pro-Jordan argument, as what he always brings up is finals record being 6-0. And, and look, that's fine, it's a valid argument, but when you say it 24-7, 365, that same old cliche, it kind of gets boring. And on the flip side, Shannon Sharp, like clockwork, brought up finals competition and Michael Jordan not playing the KD Warriors. Tell me the team that he faced that was the 2017 or the 2018 Golden State Warriors. Now, first off, the KD Warriors were around 2017, 2018, and 2019. Correct me if I'm wrong, but LeBron James has had 18 other years to win at least six championships. Let's not act like the Kevin Durant Warriors were just a 10-year dynasty that stopped LeBron in his tracks. And secondly, while we're debating competition, we immediately jump to the NBA Finals. And what we always ignore is the road to the Finals. Now, why Shannon Sharp does that is that even he knows Michael Jordan's path to the Finals was much more difficult. And looking at the cold hard facts, if you take Jordan's six championships, look at his road to the finals versus LeBron's four and his road, and rank them by opponent's win percentage, there is some pretty damning evidence Jordan had a tougher road to the finals. As the top four toughest roads to the finals all belong to Michael Jordan, including five of the top six. And looking at the bottom half of the list, three out of the four of the least competitive runs to the finals belong to LeBron James. And going one step further, looking at Jordan's toughest four championships versus LeBron's four, MJ and his four toughest championships beat three 60-win teams and four 50-win teams, compared to LeBron, who for his four championships beat zero 60-win teams and only three 50-win teams. Look, you can say LeBron James faced better finals competition at his peak. But in terms of road to the finals, overall road to the championship, Michael Jordan definitively had the tougher road. You seen him do it. I'm not denying that. Shut down Tony I'm, Park on one end. In the last five minutes, say I got Timmy I also, D. I also saw him get checked when Jason Terry was guarding him in the post in his finals against Dallas. You going to deny that? No. Okay then. So, so Let me ask you a question. Has there ever been a time 
when happened? Michael Jordan showed up in an NBA Finals, and you literally looked at him and said, yo, he ain't show up. He ain't never even played nobody. Come on. Let me ask you a question. I, I'm going to do it like this here. Sure. Tell me the guy that he faced that with the the equivalent of Kevin Durant in an Michael, NBA Finals. Michael, Michael, Michael Jordan. Jordan. Well, I would or say Steph the, Curry. I, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say the equivalent of, of Kevin Durant, but let's go down the list. He beat Magic for his first title. Magic was 73! You gotta give props to Stephen A. Smith right here because bringing up the 2011 Finals is a big checkmate on Shannon Sharp. And Shannon isn't usually speechless, and him saying, MJ, he ain't play nobody, that's the biggest white flag I've ever seen Shannon wave. As even he can't deny Michael Jordan on the biggest stage never choked or fumbled at LeBron James in that series. And just comparing individual finals performances, LeBron James three times has shot under 40% in a final series, compared to Jordan, who never did. Final series under 25 points, LeBron James twice has done it, Michael Jordan zero times. Times being outscored in a final series by opponents or teammates, LeBron James seven times, Michael Jordan zero. And the most damning stat of all, games with 20 or less points in the finals. LeBron James, 10. Michael Jordan, a donut. And it always makes me chuckle how when Jordan beats these teams in the finals that were perennial 60-win teams, it gets chalked up to weak competition. I mean, look at that Portland team. Clyde Drexler, an all-star Hall of Famer. Terry Porter, an all-star. Cliff Robinson, all-defensive player, even Kevin Duckworth, an all-star in his own right. In the early 90s, that team made two finals in three years. Look at Barkley's sons. That year, Charles, MVP, Kevin Johnson, an all-star, and Thunder Dan, an all-defensive player, and also an all-star. The Kemp and Peyton Sonics, 64 wins in a very competitive West. And of course, Stockton and Malone, but just like Peyton and Kemp are a dynamic duo who won 60 plus games virtually every season. And Shannon at the very end of that clip asked Stephen A. Smith, who was the guy who Jordan beat in the finals who was on par with Kevin Durant when he played LeBron? Now first off, KD getting his numbers on LeBron James is kind of an indictment on LeBron's defense, just a little bit. But when Stephen A. Smith brought up Matt Johnson, the greatest point guard of all time, a top five player, some say top three. Shannon immediately said Magic, he was 73 years old, he was out of his prime, wasn't the same player. One of the biggest myths of all time. As Magic in 91, he was only 31 years old, and two out of the last three years, in 89 and 90, had won MVP, and 91 finished second. And Shannon's hypocrisy here, it is pretty blatant. As when it comes to LeBron James, his first time beating the Celtics, Paul Pierce was 33, Garnett was 34, and Ray was 35. If Magic being 31 is old, these guys were ancient. And the Spurs, in 2013 when LeBron beat them, Parker was 30, Manu was 35, and Duncan was 36. For Shannon's own standard, those guys are old as dirt. Michael Jordan, I'm sorry, Magic Johnson in the first title, Clyde Drexler in the crew the second title, Charles Barkley, Kevin Johnson, don't ignore okay. that, Dan Marley in them the third that title. Good, good okay, team. okay. Peyton, the glove, with Sean Kemp, before one, he became Sean Kemp. That's one Hall of Famer. And then also you've got Carl Malone, John Stockton, yes. and you have an NBA game that was considerably tougher at that particular moment in time than today's NBA game is in terms of physicality and what's allowed. Yes. So again, props to Stephen A. Smith going through Jordan's finals opponents, listing how good they were, and just reminding the audience how tough those teams were. And Shannon's only retort to Stephen A. Smith was chiming in very quickly that, quote, that's only one Hall of Famer in reference to the 96 Suns. Now this line right here is so disingenuous, so just lacking any context, it makes my head hurt. As the Hall of Fame player label provides no context and no insight to how good that player was, 
in that season. Let me give you guys an example. Jason Kidd is a Hall of Famer, but in 2011, when he beat LeBron James, was 37. Look at his stats. 9.3 points, 7.3 assists, 4.5 boards on sub 40% shooting. Technically, Jay Kidd is still a Hall of Famer who LeBron played. Stay with me. Kevin Johnson, 93, who isn't a Hall of Famer, lost to Michael Jordan in 1993, was 26 years old, putting up 17.8 points, 7.9 assists, 2.7 boards on 48% shooting. Now, technically speaking, by the Hall of Fame label, Jason Kidd was better than Kevin Johnson. But using our good old friend context and common sense, we know KJ in that series was much better than a 37-year-old Jason Kidd. And going one step further, look at Sean Kim 96. He averaged 20.9 points, 10.4 boards, two blocks on 57% shooting. Very, very impressive as Kemp was in his prime and an all-star player. Now, Tim Duncan in 2014 averaged 16.3 points, 9.2 boards, 1.3 blocks on 52.3% shooting. Now, of course, Tim Duncan, his career, his peak, was much better, much higher than Sean Kemp. But in 2014, the Duncan that beat LeBron James was not better than Sean Kemp, who isn't a Hall of Famer. Again, I hope that proves to you guys once and for all, this Hall of Fame label is a terrible benchmark for competition and how good a player was. The flip side to it is that as we watched LeBron James, even with his greatness at one point in time as a defensive player, we never looked at him and said, oh my God, that's that dude defensively. Yeah. You had, you had, now, LeBron is universally respected and revered. MJ was feared. You know the difference. So, Stephen A. Smith right here kind of had a short-term memory loss, as LeBron of Miami was a great defender, dynamic defender, and defensively versus small ball lineups could guard one through five. Now, what I agree with him on is LeBron's defensive being ironic, his defensive longevity isn't as long as it could have been. As really post 2013, maybe post 2014 at the latest, his defense took a major backseat to his offense. And especially in Cleveland, he was definitely more ball dominant in favor of offense and scoring more points. Kind of the opposite for Michael Jordan, as the older he got, the more he played off ball gave up the ball, and trusted his teammates. And defensively speaking, even at age 35, was making first team all defensive. So while Stephen A. Smith wasn't entirely right, when comparing LeBron's defensive longevity, in comparison to Jordan, it actually comes up shorter. Again, pretty ironic considering LeBron James has played 21 years to Jordan's 15. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.